Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Chris Seventy with Seventy Investments and co-host of the Good Deeds Note Investing Podcast. Hope you're all doing well today. And as promised, I wanted to share with you my performing loan calculator uh, that we talked about a few weeks ago. Uh, a few things before you open it up and start using it that I just want to mention. One is this is for training purposes only. Uh, so feel free to use it, compare it with your own calculator. I will be happy to discuss how I came up with the um, formulas and assist you in any way possible. But uh, just wanted to mention that it is for training purposes only. And second thing is it's based on IRR, which is also yield. IRR stands for internal rate of return. And what that is, is basically the interest rate that you're paying your money invested. And in many instances, it's highly fluctuates. So especially when payments come in and don't go in. So numbers, you know, reality is when you use a calculator, it's going to be wrong. Just flat out honest with you, it's going to be wrong because payments aren't going to come in on a consistent payment stream. Uh, a lot of times what it's used for is comparing assets. So say you're investing in the markets and they've been performing at a 9% return over the last three years and you have the opportunity to get into an investment at a 10 or 12% return. Uh, you run the numbers to kind of see what is a better investment and should you shift the money. Um, when dealing a lot in the commercial side or grander scale of real estate, that's a lot of times what yield is looked at is for comparing assets and seeing um, what is a better investment. Because at the end of the day, as I mentioned, you know, where you plug into your calculator is not going to end up being 100% correct at the end of the day. Of course, it will fluctuate. Uh, so let's kind of digest it a little bit too much on that. Let's roll into the calculator. So left-hand side, you've got your information uh, to put in, and then you've got calculations on the right. First thing I'll mention is if it's a blue font, it's editable. If it's black, uh, don't touch it uh, because it's a calculation and it will basically spit out the information for you. So the blue cells are the things that you should be inputting information on. Uh, you'll notice there are three tabs on this. The other two tabs are locked. You can't edit them, but I will be happy to um, go through that with you at any point in time to share information on how this was calculated, especially if you're comparing it to your uh, calculator. So let's run through a scenario. Uh, here we've got a UPB of 32,500 uh, with a payment starting on 8-1. It's a 10-year period, which is calculated because it was a 10% return or interest rate at 429 a month. Uh, the note acquisition date is more put in there, um, more or less for your needs. It does not affect any of the calculations. Uh, so let's look at, okay, I'm thinking of acquiring this note and okay, let me throw a number of $28,000 for purchase price plus due diligence of 1,000. So I'm really all in at 29,000 and my servicing cost is 20 bucks a month. Is that a good deal? You know, that's a question somebody may ask. So there's really two situations. One is, you know, do you hold this till the end? Some investors may, some investors may not. And we've, the other option is, okay, I'm going to sell this, but when you sell it, uh, how long are you going to hold it? And what's the return you're going to try and sell it at to another investor? So we're going to go through those. Uh, first, if you hold it till the end, you know, you're going to hold it for the 120 months. Uh, it's basically going to, you know, get disposed of in 2029. And at the $28,000, you're getting a 12.6% yield based on these calculations. Now, is that what you were targeting? I don't know. What were you targeting? Say you were targeting 13%. Well, if you're targeting 13%, your number should have been more closer to you know, 27, 5, 7, 8. Again, you know, 27, 5, 27, 5, 7, 8, it's not going to move the needle. But you notice that gives you the 13% return now. Say you were looking for really aggressive. I saw somebody wanting 15%. Boom, you're at 25, 6. Say you're not as conservative, um, you know, and, uh, or you're looking, hey, I'm happy with 10%. You know, you're paying pretty close to par uh, for that. No. Uh, one thing I'll mention, and I'll stop right there, is the calculations for this are based off of your net revenue. So what I mean by that, so let's stop and think. This person's paying $429 a month. You're not getting $429. You're getting $409 because you've got that $20 servicing fee. If the servicing fee were to go to $35 a month, Notice what happens to your return. It goes down. Say your servicing fee is only $15. What's going to happen? It's going to go 
go up. So, you know, it takes into account your net when you're dealing with lower value uh, monthly payments of like two to 250, you'll see the yield really fluctuates a lot because you're paying a higher percentage of servicing fees. So that's holding it till end. Now, let's say you want to sell this thing after 24 months. You know, is it 24 months? Is it 36 months? You can pick the number and choose. The next thing is, okay, I'm selling it to Jane Doe and Jane's looking for, you know, a 11% return. Now, selling it to Jane, 11% return, I'm selling it to Jane for 26,550 based on the UPB in 2021 and giving Jane in 2021 a 11-year return. So, but what happens is by selling it to Jane at 11, when I'm buying at 12,6, you know, if I held it, now all of a sudden, because I'm exiting early, it's up to almost 15%. Again, it goes back to the velocity of money um, in that situation. You know, if I held this for 48 months, I can tell you that the yield is going to go down. You know, it's down to 13.2. So kind of gave people the option and scenario to play with this, whether you're going to hold it till the end or discard it earlier. And when you discard it, what you're going to discard it for. So I hope you find this helpful. And as I mentioned, if you have questions, comments, feedback, please feel free come my way and shoot, shoot it along. Uh, you know, my goal is always to help people as part of the group and, uh, you know, try and educate you in some fashion to make wiser decisions, especially when it comes to buying assets. Cause the last thing you want to do is overpay for something, uh, especially on these performing assets that have the low uh, monthly payments, because sometimes uh, people can get burnt when they're looking at things that might take 10 years to pay back uh, on things. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Click on, fill out the information below, click on the link and you will get an email where you can download this calculator. So thank you and have a good day.